Good morning, and welcome to our Remembrance Day service. Today we are grateful to gather together virtually to honor those who have served and continue to serve Canada during times of war, conflict, and peace. This year we highlight military service by Black Canadians. Though these soldiers and veterans have contributed to many significant battles, their contributions have been overlooked in Canadian history. Please join us for the land acknowledgement, and then please stand for the singing of our national anthem. Out of our deep respect for Indigenous peoples in Canada, we acknowledge that all Toronto Catholic District School Board properties are situated upon traditional territories. The territories include the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nations. We also recognize the contributions and enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people in Ontario and the rest of Canada. today's ceremony with an opening prayer and scripture. Let us begin with our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of love, God of peace, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. This day we gather to remember those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Many sacrificed so much for our freedom and democracy. As we pray and reflect together, create in us hearts of forgiveness and compassion, hearts of peace and reconciliation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God's inspired word. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. The Lord shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Blessed then are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in the one body and be thankful. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I now invite Director Brown to share a few words. 
I feel deeply honoured to speak about the more than 2.3 million Canadians who have served in our military and more than 118,000 who have made the ultimate sacrifice with their lives. On Remembrance Day, we remember the great contributions, the sacrifices and all the efforts of the brave Canadians who have served both at home and abroad. As we continue to work to understand our students and their experiences here in the TCDSB, it's important that we focus on the contributions of black Canadians in the service. During the First World War, many black Canadians were looking to enlist, enlist for their country and they were turned away. However, as casualties grew, the Canadian Armed Forces needed soldiers and in 1916, the number two construction battalion was created, the only black unit ever formed in Canada. The poster read, wanted at once, 300 men for number two construction battalion for colored men of Canada. They weren't always wanted. Black Canadians had tried to enlist and had been turned away, told that it was a white man's war. Lieutenant Colonel George Fowler, commanding the 104th Battalion said, I have been fortunate to have secured a very fine class of recruits, and I did not think it fair to these men that they should have to mingle with Negroes. But by the summer of 1916, there were mountain casualties overseas and fewer volunteers at home. The Canadian forces needed soldiers, whatever their color. On July 5th, 1916, the number two construction battalion was created the only black unit ever formed in Canada. Most black recruits wanted to fight the enemy, not build roads. The army let us join, one said, but they wouldn't let us fight. They gave us shovels, not rifles. The unit was formed in Nova Scotia, home to more than a third of the country's blacks. The soldiers were black, but the officers were white, with one exception, the battalion chaplain, Captain William White. The son of a slave, White had come up from Virginia to attend theology school at Acadia University and stayed on as a Baptist minister. In 1916, he was the only black officer in the British forces. Recruits trickled in from across Canada. From Alberta, Arthur and William Ware enlisted, the sons of the legendary black cowboy, John Ware. One hundred and sixty-three American blacks came north to enlist. They had hoped to escape the deep prejudice they knew in the United States but they experienced segregation in Nova Scotia as well. In a Toro movie theater, they were forced to sit upstairs in the balcony until officers intervened. In March 1917, the battalion sailed for England. In May, they crossed the English Channel and entered France, traveling to La Joux, near the Swiss border. Most spent the war here. 
in the forest of the Jura Mountains, logging, milling, and shipping the wood that was needed for the war effort. In August 1917, conscription became law. And ironically, the black men who had been turned away because of their color were now required by law to enlist. The men of number two milled wood, built bridges and roads, defused landmines, and retrieved the wounded from the battlefield. They served with pride and courage and distinguished themselves in service. They were officially disbanded on September the 15th, 1920. In July 1993, a granite memorial was unveiled at Picto, Nova Scotia in their honor. This is the site of an annual service that commemorates the men of the Black Battalion who served our country despite the prejudice they experienced. Members of the number two construction battalion served our country with pride and despite the prejudice that they faced on the battlefield. From the War of 1812 to the war in Afghanistan, black Canadians served the armed forces in a significant number of battles. And in more recent decades, as part of United Nations peacekeeping efforts. By remembering their services and their sacrifices, we recognize the tradition of freedom these men and women fought to preserve. Their actions made a significant difference, and it's up to us to ensure that their dreams of peace are realized. Each November, our schools continue to honor our veterans and highlight the TCDSB's monthly virtue, which is peacemaking. During the month, students learn about the history of war and reflect on the contributions of all soldiers. And together, we become an embodiment of peace. Father Michael will deliver today's reflection. Welcome, Father Michael Lehman. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Friends, every once in a while, when we get in a hurry and we're rushing around doing things, we sometimes forget our lunch, or sometimes we forget our phones or our devices, or these days we may perhaps forget our masks. Yet, Remembrance Day, we always remember, we never forget, nor should we ever forget. The global pandemic will have an effect on our Remembrance Day celebrations this year, Yet that does not mean that we should not remember. The world has endured some 260 wars since 1900. We have fought as allies of other nations who represent the free world in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Gulf War, the Kosovo War, and the Afghan War. Canada has also been peacekeepers in the Suez, Kashmir, Cyprus, the Congo, Somalia, Bosnia, Rwanda, and the Sinai, to name a few. Canada, we are a peacekeeping nation, and we remember those women and men who have served and continue to serve our country. And we remember the many, many sacrifices so many people have made, those who gave up their lives to keep us safe and free. And we need to remember on Remembrance Day to take a moment to reflect on what it means to be free, what it means to have had someone else pay the price for our freedom. How ungrateful would we be if we didn't stop and remember. The world could have been a very different place for us without their sacrifice, which cannot 
and should not be forgotten. We sing, God keep our land glorious and free. We stand on guard for thee. We can stand proudly as Canadians, grateful for the lifestyle that we are able to enjoy, and even more grateful for the sacrifices and efforts of those who have given us this tremendous opportunity. Most of us don't come close to war, yet we have been touched somehow by conflict. Think about perhaps for a moment that you may have been in contact or have come to know newcomers to our country. They are also why Remembrance Day is so important and so vital. We have the other 364 days to make sure we are not creating more events, conflicts, or war, which we will need to remember. To those we remember, can we bow our heads, give them some respect, some sympathy, our thanks, our commitment to never forget. To those who gave their lives, thank you. To those who survived, thank you. To our God, a humble, contrite heart, our charity, our care and concern for one another and for all humankind. In our continued search for true harmony and peace throughout the world, we will remember them. God cares, and God invites us to care as well. God believes that we have everything to contribute, something that each of us can contribute, that we can make a difference, that our words and actions can help build the kingdom that Jesus proclaimed and Jesus lived, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We remember, we will not forget. Owen Rowe wrote the poem, A Soldier's Farewell, in 1942. Owen volunteered to fight for Canada and wrote the poem before departing for World War II. Land of my birth, O dearest earth, beneath whose shining skies I toil, I must now leave thy sacred soil and risk my blood on foreign lands to save thee from the harsh demands which tyrant, heartless, would impose if none to freedom's call arose. I go with warm tears in my eyes, for I shall miss thy smiling skies. The rapture of thy mirrored stars, those festive nights with soft guitars. My love and all that I hold dear, which just in dreams can now be near. Land of my birth, so fill with mirth, I go and I may not return. But fires of my love will burn, for thee, bright as thy noonday sun, sure as the victory to be won. The poem, In Flanders Field, was written by a Canadian physician, Lieutenant Colonial John McRae, amid the horrors of the Second Battle of the Ypres in May 1915. Through his hauntingly poignant poem, McRae succeeded in giving a voice to the 60,000 Canadians who would lose their lives in the First World War and ignited an international effort to keep their legacy. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row that marks our place and in the sky, that larks still bravely singing fly. Scars heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw the sun glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours, hold it high, if ye break faith, us who die. We shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders Field. Please stand for our moment of silence.
This concludes our service. We would like to extend our profound thanks to everyone who has joined us today.